difficulties on the family altar because we have family and the devil has no way. So let us remain unstoppable, unshakable, unbreakable because together as a family. When, when we talk about a family altar, we're talking about the structure. Yeah. The structure was, that was fragmented and that was attacked by the enemy from the way go. Yeah. So normally we say um, this is where humanity meets divinity. Yes, sister. Whether you are black, white, mixed up, or any other race, sir. But you, like me, we are fighting generational curses under family altar. Hello and a very warm welcome to this episode of Family Altar where humanity meets divinity. My name is Zinte Kulu and of course never flying solo on this one. I'm with uh, the host with the most. I can't believe this is where we are, Apostle David Malazi. Wow, and wow. 13 wow. episodes later. Yeah, it feels like yeah, yesterday yeah. when we had that very first episode, I remember Apostle David and I just establishing the whole vision and purpose behind Family Altar. And uh, I, I mean, I think one of the first you know, questions I'm going to come to just now. But what I have to tell you <laughs> is that this is the last episode for this season. And so we're just going to be recapping and summarizing and just having some final words from the Apostle um, on the back of all the episodes that we've had thus far of uh, Family Altar, just for this season. It's not the last season. It's just the second one. Apostle, welcome. And it's so great to be reunited. I feel like it's been a while. Yeah, you abandoned me for so many people over the past few weeks. Oh, no. Um, uh, um, life situation. <laughs> life situation. <laughs> no, you are still loved. You are still loved. Um, uh, it's life situation. Yeah. Life situation. I mean, and yes, like I yes. said, it feels like yesterday when we had the very first episode of Family Arts. Oh yes. We just, you know, explaining the vision and the mission for the for the viewer. Oh yes. Um, yeah. Having run this marathon now for a couple of weeks, wow. where's your headspace at? How do you feel? Do you feel like you we've accomplished what it is that you had a purpose um, for Family Arts to do? Look, it is, it is never enough. Yeah. Um, the more, the deeper you go in, the more um, the, uh, you still need to reach mm. uh, many souls out there. Yeah. And, and um, it's like you're not doing enough. Yeah. I remember the vision is so big mm. and, and it has to restore the, what was fractured for the longest of time. Mm where many people were absorbed into the do's and the don'ts of life, yeah. uh, chasing the wind, but never addressing the real issues. Right. So going too deep in there, you dig um, some of the graves, people's mm. died with secrets, you know, it's... it's, it's I believe it's like we're almost there, but not there yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, just reflecting on most of the episodes that have, have taken place, one of the biggest mm. lessons I've taken away is to say, you know, a lot of the times when you are going through a situation, you hurt so much more because you feel it is so unique to you. Oh, yes. But having mm. seen all the guests that have come in and out, for mm. me, one of the biggest message, which I would like you as a viewer as well to take home, is to say you are not alone. You know, you yeah. may be going through rejection, you may be going through abuse, you may be going through loss, you may be going through mm. identity issues. But, you know, this show yeah. has really shown that yeah. there's so many other people who go through the same thing. Mm. But most importantly, I think what you've taught us is to say there's yeah. always a light at the end of every tunnel. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. your situation doesn't have to be the end of you. And I know that you've had the chance to give so much advice, to give so much of yourself to a lot of people. And thank you for that. But oh, yes. I mean, as the thank host you. of the thank show, you. what are some of the lessons you've taken away just from the experience? Look, I've, I've realized that um, the people in their religiosity, I don't know whether yeah. it's the right way, but uh, <laughs> they are so over sermonized yeah. and, and, and wired and programmed yeah. in such a way that ne they never see themselves as the perpetrators, mm. but they remain victims. Mm. And, 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 and like the first one that we had, the, uh, the issue of identity rejection, I mean, uh, this man went all out looking for something that he knows nothing about. Yeah. And he never gave himself enough chance uh, mm. to sit and heal his wounds. Mm. But he goes out there bleeding mm. and looking for someone now to come and, and, and you know, dress you know, those wounds. Mm. But that person was, was never there yeah. when he was wounded. 
And, 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 and now there was number one, there was number two, there was number three. I don't know if maybe money to surpass the number of God. But, but so the story goes on. But still, uh, um, um, the issue is not yet finalized. Yeah. But at the same time, again, you are, you are ministering to others mm. while you are bleeding. Mm. And, and you have couples in the mm. church. You have people who have been married for years. Mm. And while you can't function on that department, sure. and still you don't see yourself as someone who's seeking help. Well, if you're wondering what exactly he is talking about, it's one of the, I think it was the second episode of Family Altar where we had a conversation, the Apostle had a conversation with Bishop Makafula just mm -hmm. on the issue of identity. Take a look at this. I was born um, um, uh, somewhere in Pretoria, and I was raised in a place called um, Potkatras Rast, now Mukopani. Mm. Uh, my mother's surname um, is um, Tima, and my mother was later married to Makafula. Okay. But I am Stina. So later I got to find out mm. about my family, my biological father and his family, and um, that is who I am today. Well, Muruti, as you were saying, just having yeah. a look at that clip over there, you yeah, know, there's so yeah. much. Um, I, I think it got quite emotional, quite painful in some yeah. points. But I think just to summarize and wrap it and bring it back home, um, how important is identity and having a sense of belonging? Because I think that is the one thing that he lacked mm. from his foundation, which went on to sort of like impact the rest of his life, his relationships, his marriages, mm. etc. You know, what are your thoughts um, and your like final words to a viewer who's listening in thinking, but you know, I have no idea who I am, where I come mm. from, I'm trying to find my identity, but you know, there are no people to give me the answers, oh, yeah. the adults are not there, there are secrets and all of those kind of things. Things. Um, mm. What do you say to such a person? Uh, please, please listen to this. Um, without identity, nothing will make sense to you. And there is nothing that you can achieve. Because even the, the mother nature itself will question you. Yeah. The laws of the universe will be against you. So, so in order for you to, to try to navigate life without following the proper channels as far as life is concerned, unfortunately, you'll never win. And, and I know in our churches, um, many people were brainwashed with the Western culture, and, and that is all that they know. That, you know, um, I am the family of, of God. Please, look... God was never drunk when he created us in his image and likeness, but he placed us in a family. Yeah. And as much as there are a lot of families out there, you need to belong somewhere mm. because in order for you to come and, and, and add on the family tree, there, there were some other branches that were pruned yeah. in order for you to come. Mm. And when those branches had to go through pruning process, they were green. But the gardener realized that uh, these ones, they are meant for quantity, not quality. Mm. So they were supposed to have other one who would come and weather the storms. Mm. And that person used to be me and you. Yeah. So, so, so there was no way that you can come here and tell us that when you are a family of God, you've got the identity, the DNA of Jesus, and then coming with all that nonsensity. You yeah. need to be realistic. You need to know what you are here for, your purpose of existence. Then for the first time, you'll make sense to people. I get you. You'll make sense to people once you yeah. know who you are and where you come from as well. But then closely linked to the subject of identity yeah. is the issue of rejection. There's so many people who will find themselves just like in the middle of nowhere because yeah. they are rejected by, yeah. not because, you know, they don't want to belong to the family, they want to identify with the people mm. of the same mm. DNA, but they simply are just rejected. You know, there are mothers who reject their children at birth. There are fathers who never come back for their children yeah. or gone forever. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, I think it's one of the things um, the same guest actually did touch on, which we'll have a look at um, just now. Yes, um, a lot of rejection ever since um, I was born because when I was born, uh, my father, my political father, rejected me. I, 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 I will talk about rejection because um, he met with my mother somewhere here in Gauteng. Mm. 
And when I was young, he left and went back to KZN. Mm. But uh, the reason why I'm talking about the rejection is because he knew where he left me. And wow. even after, uh, uh, now that I have found the family, I found that you know, he never mentioned anything about me mm. in, in his family. You know, so just as we were talking, as he was saying on the clip there, his mother rejected him. His father was never there. His sister, his sister yeah. rejected him. What are your final words? I've got only a minute left, you know, to somebody that is in the same or similar situation to Shirap. Look, the, the, rejected, the rejection starts from the womb. Mm. If you are being rejected from there, because look, whatever that was never given to you mm. while you were formed in the womb, it will be hardly difficult to find it out here. So you come out packaged. Mm -hmm. So before you can start blaming each other, go back to the roots that what happened when I was locked up in that womb, mm -hmm. in that process of making, when I was formed. Mm -hmm. What really happened there? And the only person that you can address is your mom. It always goes back to the mommy, mother. Mommy, what did you say when I was still in here? Yes, because... How does the mother answer for the father, that, an adult father they've that got decided the key not for to come the, back? The mothers know who their fathers are. I mean, there's no way that the mothers, you know, that's what... <laughs> there's no way that you can be a mother when you don't know who the father of your child is. You so know why who the, the father of the child is, but the father wants nothing to do with the child. As a child, how do I deal He's with that? It's got nothing to do with the child. The child must know the truth, because the truth will set him free. Because remember, there, there might be some things that, you know, happened between the two of you. Yeah. But the child was born out of love. Yes. So it is never my problem. Okay. Let it be your problem, but allow me to know my father. For the Bible said, I must honor my father and my mother. Which is true. Even when they are fighting. Yes. I must respect them. I'm not here to take sides. I uh, get you. Yes, 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 yes. I don't want to preach. <laughs> I, I, I understand, but before we take a commercial break, yeah. now I'm saying, right, I know who my father is, yeah. right? But my father, or my mother even for that matter, because it's not only fathers that reject yes, their children, yes. they just will not have anything to do with me. Do I feel like that is the end of me? Have I got no purpose in this world anymore? Just Never. because the people that birthed me, that brought me to this earth, have nothing to do, don't want anything to do with me. I mentioned the, the family tree as a point of reference. Yeah. The mother got sisters. You know, there are some other family members. Mm -hmm. What matters most is the blood that mm -hmm. runs in your veins. Yeah. So, so try to get somebody in the family close yeah. to your mother. Yes. And then so that you can understand the pain of your mother. Yes. Yeah. Because she might have went through something, you know, mm. that you you will never know. Mm. And she feels like you are too young to for her to explain herself to you. Yeah. So, so, so get to family members. Mm. That is your clan. That is mm. your tribe. That is your identity. Yeah. That is your banner. Yeah. So, so once you are in that family, humbly so ask relevant questions. Yes. It's when you can understand the wounds of your mom. I get you, and I think what you're also saying in essence is to say don't focus so much on the people that rejected you. Look at the no. ones who are still here, yes. who want to love yes. you, who want to care yes. for you, and in that, take them as your family, because they are essentially, you know, no, never give and up receive on your their family. love. Never no, I'm saying up. members of your family as yeah. well, you yeah. know. Yeah. If your own biological parents happen to reject you, you still have aunts, you still have uncles, focus on them, receive now you are their love, yeah. and, 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 and just move on with life. Um, and learn more about way. you. Yes, learn more about yourself. <laughs> we'll take a quick commercial break. It's getting heated in the studio. We'll see you just after this.